how does one identify a really good deal? There are several questions that investors must ask themselves when it comes to investing their hard-earned money in business. I'm not going to say property, but in business in general, right? And the first question you need to ask yourself is, how much will the return or will the investment return? That's key number one. What is your ROI? The second question is, what does it cost to own such a business, right? Once you've had those two questions are cleared up, you then also have to, there are also kind of more important questions that investors should be concerned with, which is the value of the property. Because now that you know uh, how much it, what the investment return is, how much it costs, then you need to know the value of the property. And it's very essential, especially the true, it is very true, especially in the property environment, when you consider purchasing an investment property. And there are five common uh, valuation methods that experts use, right? And, and to, add, to get kind of a sense of a high level a rental income property, because we're talking investment, we're not talking properties that people are going to buy to stay in. I'm sure the viewers are here because they want to generate income and they want to find other sources of income or other forms of income. And therefore, I'm going to limit it to just an investment property. And the number one is what you call your sales comparison approach, right? Two is the capital asset pricing model approach and your income approach. And you've got what you call the gross rent multiplier to determine the property value. That's another approach. And you've got your cost approach. I have added my own to it, which is which I call the 80-20 rule approach. And the 80-20 rule approach I've done, uh, people can check it on my on my YouTube channel because I've went, I've gone lengthy into it, how I came up with that structure and how I've actually used it to make money. So I think the best thing we're going to start with is just what the investors, because I've mentioned this and it's, you know, I normally like to break things down if time permits, because I don't want to use big words because we want people to understand what we're selling, right? And your sales comparison approach is the method that's mostly used by state agents and appraisers. It's a common method. It basically relies on attributes or futures of the property. For example, you, and it's normally done with like to like approach or you compare apples with apples. So for example, you're going to, what, what an estate agent will do or an appraiser will do is look at the, the, the sold property in a particular area. But what they do is that they're going to say, if I have a five bedroom property with a pool garage and probably it has a 2000 square meters um, land or space, then they have to compare it at, to a, a similar property that has, that has that, those features. And you cannot do it with another property, with a different property. So for example, you cannot go and then compare it to a property that's a three bedroom and have, have the size of the, of, of the 2000 square meter um, size of a property. So that, that, that is very key. And that's what people normally use. The appraisers, I mean, the, the, the investors, um, estate agents use. We have what we call, which I use, but not often is your, your capital asset pricing model. It is more comprehensive valuation tool. I love that. And I've always, I've been on this stage and I've spoken about how important you look at your ROI, which is your return on investment. So basically what it does is that it looks at the potential return on investment and derive, derive from the rental income, right, of the property, and then compares it to an investment with no risk or an alternative form of investment, such as the real estate investment trust, which people call it REITs, where you buy on the stock market. So, so those are the things. And of, of course, I'm also not going to go into details how to calculate ROI, because I've done it on my YouTube channel, Property Ask Echo. It's called How to Calculate ROI. And I've gone in details how to do that. So people can check it out. But using the CAP model approach is my favorite because it takes the financial aspects of the business into consideration. 
and as, as opposed to your income approach. So the income approach, which is the number three, it only focuses on determining the potential income of the rental property, which is the yield relative to the initial investment. So basically what it says is, let's say you bought a property for 100,000, right? And the rental, the monthly rental income is 1,000. So what it does is that it then takes the, the property at 100,000, and then it takes the rental income, the annual rental income, which will give you 12,000, and then it divides it by 100,000. So it gives you uh, what you call the cap rate, which is your 12%. So if you've heard in the market, people are saying, what's the yield or what is the cap rate? It's the same thing. What I don't like about this is because it doesn't consider the expenses that goes into so it doesn't consider your attorney fees and all those. Your invest- so it doesn't consider the management fees. And it just not, it's something that a state agent sell because it's a blinder approach. And you look at the numbers and you think it's big, but it normally doesn't give you much. 